Hi guys, welcome to part two of this tutorial. So let's get started on this. We're going to create a light and we are going to create a camera. Let's make this camera active and we're going to set a, we're going to add a protection tag so that we can't move it around. We'll deactivate that for a moment and we are going to move our light back and over there. Let's go into our top view and we want to hold down control, uh, move that over, hold down control and copy another light over. Move it to around there and let's bring our light up here in our object manager to keep it all organized. We are going to rename this to key and this one will be called fill. So our key light's going to have area shadows and our fill light is going to be reduced in intensity down to about 30%. Go back to our perspective view and we want to turn on our interactive render viewer. Let's, um, let's bring up our render quality there. And now we want to, we want to, let's see, reduce that down. No, let, keep it at 30% on our fill and we can turn off our interactive render viewer then we're going to create a new material let's open that up and rename it to pumpkin skin okay now in our color channel let's apply it to our pumpkin and we're gonna in our color channel set it to be a nice pumpkin orange so you can set this to be green or blue or whatever color you like, but I'm gonna go with pumpkin color. Let's go for a little bit lighter there. Okay, cool, happy with that. And in our, in our bump channel, let's turn that on and we're going to add a noise. Let's go into that noise and we want to set the noise to displaced turbulence. Okay. Now we want to, okay, we want to, um, in our bump channel, we're going to create a layer and inside the layer there, we want to create another noise shader. It is uh, noise there and open that up and we're going to set the set the noise type here to cranal okay so let's increase our global scale to 2000 percent it's a bit too high we're going to go for 1000 percent and we want to go to change the blending mode here to add so that we can see the effect of both noise shaders there. Let's reduce the blending strength to 60% and that's looking pretty good. Okay, let's close out, close down that window there and we're gonna apply our new material to our lid because we haven't done so yet. Now, for our lid, we want to, let's turn off our interactive render viewer, we want to separate our stem from our lid so so that we can apply a different material to our stem so loop selection mode we're going to select those three loops of our that make up our stem and we want to go to select and set selection now we can call this selection stem and we're going to duplicate this material and we're going to call this stem open it up and we want to change the color here to a dark brown and we are going to apply it to our lid and we're going to drag our stem selection tag down to the selection field there okay so let's turn back on our interactive render viewer and this is what we got so okay so now you can see that our lid has the pumpkin material applied to it and our stem has the stem material applied to it. If I delete off the pumpkin material there, you can see that it goes back to the default material. 
undo that and let's activate our camera we want to open up our stem material and go into our bump channel and clear that off we want to create a new uh, surface called uh, a new tile surface and in the pattern set that to lines to set the orientation to V and okay so it's not doing what we want it to do so we need to go into our stem material tag here and we're going to set the projection to cylindrical okay so now it's working for us cool so back into our bump channel and we're going to add a layer in that layer we want to add another sh noise shader there we go and let's open that up we are going to increase the global scale to 600 percent let's uh, go for 80 percent on that okay now go back to our bump channel open that up and we're going to set the blending mode to add and we're going to reduce the blending strength to 40 percent on that so i'm just going to mess around with this uh, just to get it to where I want it to be um, you can mess around with the properties here and you can get it to where you want it to be or you can follow along exactly so I'm gonna increase the low clip here that's gonna increase the darkness of the black areas and I'm just turning that on and off to see what effect it's having. Okay, cool. So I'm happy with that. Let's turn off our interactive renderer view, uh, region there and deactivate our camera. And now in with our loop selection tool, we want our pumpkin object. Make sure our polygon mode is selected. And we are going to select our eye socket polygons those two there those two loops these two loops as well so we have those loops selected we're going to do the same for the loops in our mouth so on the lips of the pumpkin and we are going to select all of the inner loops within the pumpkin so I'm going to turn my the camera navigation to camera mode so we can just move the camera around as if we were in a first person shooter game um, and that's just going to make it easier for us to navigate around the view here while we're inside the pumpkin so I'm selecting all my loops in that are inside the pumpkin and the reason we're doing this is the same reason we did it for our stem we want to set a selection tag for the in, inner polygons of our pumpkin so that we can apply a different material to it. Um, so let's have a look at this. We're gonna set our camera navigation back to um, the original mode and we want to, we want to, with our direct selection tool, deselect some of these polygons because they were selected basically accidentally we don't want these polygons on the outside of the pumpkin selected so i'm holding down control and i'm just dragging my mouse around with my left click button pressed down you can increase the size of the selection area there with your square right square bracket and you can just hold down your left click on your mouse and then oops control z on that then you can just deselect all of those unwanted polygons Okay, just make sure that we have all the polygons that we don't want deselected. Holding down control for each time we want to deselect a polygon. Okay, so I think I've deselected all the unwanted polygons. So now I just have my eye sockets, my map, my lips, and the inner part of my pumpkin. So let's go to select and set selection on that that's going to create a new selection tag 
and we're going to name this to inside and hit enter there. Now we want to duplicate our pumpkin material and we're going to call this inside. Let's open that up or let's apply it to our pumpkin object and then we can drag down our new selection tag into the selection field there. Let's open this up and we're going to change the color of this to a yellow and let's activate our camera again and let's go to our we want to go to our render settings turn off save and render this out to see what we got okay so this is what we got so far so next we are going to turn on our interactive interactive render region okay Let's mess around with this inside material. Go into our reflectance channel and add a Beckman. And that is going to add some reflect reflection to the inside of our pumpkin. Turn down the brightness there. Get it to where you want it to be. Okay, so now we got some specular highlights in the inside of our pumpkin. Go into bump and open up so we want to clear this bump and we want to add some noise okay let's open this up and we're going to s we're going to change the relative scale on the y-axis to 600 percent and the global scale will set to 300 percent Let's increase the low clip there and we'll change our global scale to 100%. Okay. Let's increase, increase the roughness to see what that's going to do. So it's not doing it is giving it the exact effect I want. I want to increase the brightness here to increase the reflect the specular highlights, the visibility of them. Now, okay, let's go to our bump channel and we're going to copy this shader and we're going to paste it into our layer color there. Let's uh, decrease the brightness down to about 34%. And back into our color channel, we want to darken that up a bit. Too dark, I think. Go back there to a bit more yellowish in color. In our reflectance channel, let's turn down the roughness. Okay, so that's starting to look better. Let's create a light and we want to change the color of this light to a light yellow. This is going to be the inside light of our pumpkin. So it's usually a candle in most cases, in all cases, to be fair. I don't think anybody's ever installed a light bulb into it. Um, you never know. So, okay, so I, I like the look of that. Let's change this light name to Inside Light. Hit enter on that. And we want to go to our Visibility tab here. Just let, General tab, sorry, and change that to Volumetric. So now our light is visible. You're getting these rays that are shining out through our eyes and our mouth go to our visibility tab and turn down the brightness because right now it's way too bright. Let's turn down the sample distance there to get a more realistic set of rays coming out there. 
it's going to increase render time but it's going to look better go to our general tab and change visible light to none just to see what that looks like so i do like the volumetric visible light turned on i just don't like how bright it is uh, or the distance that it's coming out so i'm changing the outer distance to 200 and that is looking pretty good okay guys hope you learned a lot in part two of this two tutorial uh in the next video we're going to be creating a floor and we're going to be creating a cool material to apply to our floor uh see you in the next video <laughs>